Hi there, today a quick video about an item we all know and love, Alchemist's Fire. This is just a taste really of what is about to come as I'm putting together a complete guide to alchemy in Dungeons and Dragons, but I have some handy things that you can use in your game right away, and I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm still alive and I'm back at work making vids for you. Alchemist's Fire is the substance formerly known as Greek Fire. Even in the Greyhawk and Forgotten Realm settings, it was known as Greek Fire, even though no such place exists on those worlds, so logically it became Alchemist's Fire instead. Interestingly, the earliest flamethrowers didn't even spray a combustible mixture, instead they just spewed flames along with burning sparks and burning coals. The devices were simple mechanisms with a charcoal loaded brazier, a bellows pumped air into the brazier and this projected fire out of the mouth of a pipe with a terrible roar, which was very dragon-like. It's believed that the range of such devices did not exceed 5 to 15 meters, but for the capture of wooden fortifications or use in a naval battle when the ships converged closely for boarding battles, such a range was enough. The use of a special flammable mixture at sea was described in his work on the art of the commander in 350 BC by the Greek author Aeneas the Technician, who most likely was a politician or military leader, one of the first to write about combat tactics and the art of war. In his writings, a mixture that could not be extinguished using traditional methods was described as follows. To burn enemy ships, a special mixture is used, consisting of lighted resin, sulfur, sawdust of resinous wood, incense and tow. Drawing on an excellent article from Dragon Magazine issue 334 published in August 2005, written by Paul Leach, it states that the appellation of Greek fire actually refers to several different volatile mixtures that evolved between the 7th and 12th centuries in the Middle East, and it's not really restricted to those employed by the Byzantine Empire. Other names include wet fire, artificial fire, and molten fire. A Syrian architect named Kalinikos is credited with creating the original formula around the year 673. The formulas for various types of Greek fire usually involved substances such as petroleum, derivative named naphtha, a bit similar to modern gasoline, also pitch, a sticky tar substance, quicklime, which can bust on contact with water, and saltic peter, which can have caused some compounds to abruptly combust. These formulas were considered to be the state's secrets, and fleets of Byzantine ships used tactics such as shearing off all the oars of an enemy ship, surrounding the crippled vessel with their own ships, and then jetting Greek fire out of specially equipped ships called siphonophores, which basically had a pump turret mounted on a platform at the prow of the ship, high enough to rain down fire on the enemy ships with absolutely horrific results. Even most of the smaller ships in the Byzantine Imperial fleets were equipped with sealed ceramic pots of Greek fire that they could throw or catapult at enemy ships. In 1st edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, characters hurled flaming oil flasks at the enemy, and an unlit flask of oil had a thousand and one uses aside from being a great non-magical incendiary weapon. The Greek fire was just treated as a stickier and nastier version of the flask of oil, and it made for an expedient substitution for spells such as Burning Hands, Flaming Sphere, and Pyrotechnics, since wizards really, really had to conserve their precious spell slots back then. By 3rd edition, Greek fire became Alchemist's fire, and it exploded on contact with air. A cart-mounted siphon projector appeared in the first edition adventure module titled Slave Pits of the Undercity, which seems rather high-tech, it's basically a flamethrower, but real-world examples from Earth's past exist in the same sort of technology level, so it was perfectly legit and often worth the hassle of lugging the thing down into the dungeons to clear out masses of vermin, oozes, nasty plants and such, which are not very good at avoiding lots and lots of flames. In 5th edition, the Alchemist Fire has the following properties. It is a type of adventuring gear, not a wondrous item. A flask, no properties of the flask are listed, of the substance weighs one pound and costs 50 gold coins. The description text says the sticky adhesive fluid ignites when exposed to air. As an action, you can throw this flask up to 20 feet, shattering it on an impact. Make a ranged attack against a creature or object, treating the alchemist fire as an improvised weapon. On a hit, the target takes 1d4 fire damage at the start of each of its turns. A creature can end this damage by using its action to make a DC 10 dexterity check to extinguish the flames. That's nice, but what happens when a person skilled in combining magic and alchemy makes some improvements to that sort of item? Well, I just happen to have a couple of examples for you. First, let's 
get some stats for the Siphon of War ship projector, which can just as easily be a cart-drawn weapon of war that devastates tight formations of soldiers using large shields to protect them from hurled missiles. An alchemist fire projector on a ship or land requires about the same space as a weapon like the catapult. It can be configured to either fire in a 60 foot line or a 30 foot cone by having one crew member spend one round adjusting the nozzle. Any creature caught in the line or cone takes 46 fire damage, DC 15 dexterity save to only get half damage and not be set on fire, which requires a DC 10 dexterity save to put out, just like the alchemist fire flask. Each subsequent round that a creature or object is on fire, roll an additional 2d6 fire damage. Personally, I treat ship mounted weapons attacking structures such as other ships or fortifications as siege weapons, so the flames inflict double damage to any object that can be damaged by fire. Great against wooden walls, not so great against rock walls. The ship or ground mounted fire projector is vulnerable to fire attacks itself of course, any fire damage it receives, add 10 to it and it becomes the save DC to avoid the fire projector exploding in a 20 foot radius, you may want to adjust that, uh, inflicting varying amounts of damage depending on how much fuel is left in the tank, so it's somewhere between 2d6 and 8d6 fire damage, DC 15 saving throw, dexterity saving throw to avoid damage. Uh, half that damage and being set on fire, taking a further 2d6 damage each round until they are extinguished. Keep in mind also that the fuel for those things is heavy and it is limited. Moving on, how about some enhanced flasks of alchemical fire that have been turned into wondrous items? It doesn't take magic to make alchemist fire that is very effective against aquatic creatures, just spend another 20 gold per flask to add some quicklime to it and it will ignite on contact with water, and water will not extinguish the flames. Here is a picture of historically accurate sling bullets, by the way, in case you ever wondered. Uh, but how about incendiary bullets? Alchemist fire sling bullets are twice as large as regular sling bullets and using them inflicts disadvantage on the attack roll, but there is no reduction to the range of the weapon. These glass bullets are filled with alchemist's fire, so they inflict normal sling damage on impact, plus splash liquid fire on the target, inflicting an additional 1d4 fire damage each round after, until the target makes a DC 10 dexterity saving throw to put the fire out on the end of their turn. Simple enough, but hard to find. Expensive at 20 gold coins each, and heavy, weighing fully half a pound in their protective tubes used to safely carry them around. Silken fire looks like ordinary alchemist fire in a ceramic flask, but there are usually web or spider motifs on the container for safety. The substance inside has been magically combined with a web spell to terrifying effect. Upon impact, the flask of silken fire immediately explodes in a large web-like pattern, splattering the area in burning sticky goo. The substance covers a 20-foot circle around the point of impact and any creature coordinate takes 2d4 points of damage immediately, unless they make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, in which case they only take half damage. For that round, the area is considered difficult terrain, but the flames quickly burn away the web strands, and the next round they burn away to nothing, leaving only whatever objects the goo set on fire. The price for just one of these flasks is 500 gold coins, but they only weigh a single pound and any hedge wizard worth their pointy hat can craft since web is only a second level spell. Most hedge wizards are limited to spells of third level or lower due to the lack of formal training in the art by a decent wizard school. Making a flask that explodes as per usual but releases a 20 foot thick spherical cloud of thick black smoke only requires the combination of the first level fog cloud spell. The sphere spreads around corners and it, the area is heavily obscured. It lasts for the duration or until a wind of moderate or greater speed, at least 10 miles per hour, disperses it. Plus, it totally blocks dark vision. I leave it up to you as to whether this wondrous substance can be enhanced with the use of a higher level spell slot to cast the fog cloud spell, in which case increase the area of the smoke cloud by 20 feet per level the spell is cast. Again, this type of flask is expensive at 500 gold coins, but they are easy enough for any mage to be able to cast and who has proficiency in the alchemical supplies tool set. Finally, a favourite of both me and Cadley Bonaduce is the Flask of Thunderous Fire, which combines the effects of a Flask of Alchemist Fire with the Thunder Wave spell. On impact, each creature in a 15 foot cube originating for the impact point must make a DC 13 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 1d4 fire damage and an additional 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from the point of impact. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. In addition, unsecured 
code objects that are completely within that area of effect are automatically pushed 10 feet away and the spell emits a thunderous boom audible out to 300 feet along with a flashing of fire which just gets quickly extinguished by the intense blast of sound. You may want to add some deafening or stunning effect for a much higher price but lower the constitution saving throw to DC 10 and the victims get to roll each round to restore their senses otherwise the effect can last up to five rounds maximum. Again it's 500 gold coins for just one of these ceramic flasks. Have fun thinking up simple combinations of spells with alchemical fire flasks for your own. Meanwhile my name is AJ Pickett, I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore so I'll get back to work on the complete guide to alchemy and as always I'll be back with more for you very soon. Thank you.